Hi guys, how are you all going? Um, I wanted to make another video. Yes, last night I had corned beef slash silver side hell. Um, today I, I've just done a workout, finished half an hour ago, getting ready to go out. And I thought I'll make a video about um, the psychology that goes behind changing a lifetime of really bad habits and really bad thought processes. I think the hardest part has been the thought, changing your thought processes. Um, <laughs> I self mutilated for years, years. I really did. Uh, whether it be food or um, disliking how I looked, you know, different things about my body and about who I am as a person. Um, I second guessed everything I did. And to a degree, I still second guess everything. Um, right now, I'm having to see a psychologist because Okay, I hit a massive brick wall in the past week. Hang on, I've got to turn the power on a bit more. Hang on. Uh, I hit a massive, massive brick wall. Um, in, in, you know, my personal life, in some things and... I don't know how to explain this and that's why I'm seeing a psychology psychologist um, I've tried to be understanding and supportive to the people in my life um, that I adore I would give my life for you know I I need to be there for myself right now and for my children I can't be there for everyone. I'm trying to wrap my head around the fact that not being there for everyone is, at times, is not selfish behaviour. However, I think it is. <laughs> not being able to support people all the time makes me feel like I'm a selfish person. So, I also handle things in a manner that probably in some degree is not appropriate to get my point across. Yeah. I think because I spent so many years not actually being heard and, and really not being seen because aesthetically I wasn't what, you know, you know what I mean guys? It's just... I have issues with men because I don't know if they're looking, you know, when I'm made up, they're looking on what's the outside or what's on the inside. I have really big trust issues in regards to men. Well, I've got big, enough, big ones now. <laughs> so, I have... I have this thought process, okay, I, I, had, I have decided to go to the top of Mount Everest to attempt it. I was going to attempt in 2012, I'm now going to attempt in 2013, in May, when the weather is milder. This decision wasn't taken lightly. I've had a few people say it's a suicide mission and so I don't see it like that. I see it as a really big challenge and I've never ever been more driven in my life to 
succeed succeed at something than climbing Mount Everest. I've spoken to other climbers and they, you know, the ones that weren't able to do it, that got a certain degree up and then went back, they said it just wasn't in their heart and soul. It was just something they wanted to do. Um, but then I've spoken to other climbers that have summited and they've said, you, when you make that decision, when you're one of those climbers to summit, it needs to be in your heart and soul. And this has been something that's been in my heart and soul for a very long time, you know. And I think when I made my goals video, I um, said I was going to go to base camp four because I am, in essence, I am, at the end of the day, a mother of five children, five wonderful, awesome children who I, I want to wring their neck at times because they're just so out there. But they're each individuals and they're each beautiful little human beings. And at first I was thinking, I wanted to do this because I wanted to show them a rainbow. I wanted them to be proud. And I was also wanting one other person and his kids to be proud of me. But at the end of the day, you know, sitting back and reflecting. I hit a night the other night where I just sat back and I, I went and kissed my kids while they were sleeping and I watched them breathing and all that beautiful stuff when they're nice and calm and peaceful. And, and um, I broke down in tears and I went, you know what? This is in my heart and soul. Hey, Robert. You want to come stand up? Mount Everest, wanting to summit Mount Everest is in my heart and soul. The thing is, though, <laughs> I don't adapt any form of death and doom to it. Um, I don't know whether this is a problem or not. So another reason why I'm seeing a psychologist to deal with this I had someone say to me the other day, you know, how are you going to feed your body climbing Mount Everest when you have the stomach the, the size of a thimble? What people don't understand is with gastric bypass, we can. We can still fuel our bodies just like any other woman or, well, not man, because I'm not a man. We can fuel our bodies if we have the right proteins. And generally, you know, it is, it, it would have to be liquid protein for me up on the mountain. I've already spoken to a doctor, two vitamin, vitamin B shots a day, yada, yada. You know, like every other climber, always carrying an injection of adrenaline. You know, there are ways to be able to do these things. And the chances of me being able to summit, I mean, quite frankly, are pretty slim. I mean, we're talking probably a 2% chance once I get from base camp 4 to being able to summit. You've got two ways up there. And um, I did consider the Hillary step. I am edging towards wanting to do the Hillary step. It is a quicker climb, but it is a more dangerous climb. You've got cliffs, you've got ridges that are like that and one, you know, okay granted they have a rope <laughs> um, but you slip or the snow goes down that you're walking on, you go over an edge, you're dead. There's a, uh, I believe there is a 600 metre drop to the next ledge. So you fall, that's it, you're dead. 57 Australians have summited. 55 have been men. Um, 
no, sorry, 50, is it 52 have been men, uh, five have been women, and two of these people have passed away while coming back down. Um, both men. So if there's no other Australian women that have done it by 2013 and I do it, I will be the sixth woman. However, that's still not one that's the part that's driving me. So with psych the psychologist, I've got to work out the internal drive for this because I, I just can't work it out. I can't work it out. Um, I used to know myself quite well. Um, and and when, when you learn who you are from who you were, for, you know, for an entire lifetime of baggage. And when you move through that and push through that and get through different barricades and so forth, you do become a different person. I am not the person that I was before. I don't give a shit what anyone says. I don't sit at my walls and think of suicide at night time when my children are asleep anymore. I don't. If I crash, if I hit a massive brick, emotional brick wall, I think the longest I've hit a brick wall is for three days recently, and I got oh, it was so, I was so angry about something, and so well I was hurt, but I. For once in my life, let anger just completely consume me for three days. And then I'll let it go. I'm not angry anymore. I'm disappointed, but I'm not angry. Um, you know, I don't know. I guess I'm still kicking myself for three days of going off off the um off the rails so but I mean I'm not a robot I'm a human being I still have thought processes and emotions and a heart I'm not cold so I would like to be at times I would like to be a really cold person for like maybe two weeks you know however that then turns me into an absolute bitch and um that's not me. I fail at not being forgiving and understanding eventually after I jump up and down like a crazy loon. <laughs> yeah, so I've got lots of stuff. I mean, I guess my point is when you change who you were and you change most, and I'm talking, you change. You have to. You have to. To push forward. And grow as a human being. You have to change your thought processes. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not. Um, I still have moments like suicide. Hello, meat from hell. Um, I have a shitload of goals, and I have dreams, and I aspire to things. You know, and at the end of the day, I just want a cheap-ass kit home on a block of land with my children. I want a permanent home that I can eventually die in, you know, instead of floating and stuff. It's not good for the kids not having a permanent residence, you know. So, I'm waffling. I got on here to get to some points and I'm waffling. So, I have counselling this afternoon. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, um, still like my body. I don't think I'm too thin. thin. I mean, I don't look too thin. I'm quite pleased, don't you? I mean, boobs are still there, but yeah. I'm not too thin. No. If I was ill, I wouldn't be able to build muscle at the end of the day. So, 
if I wasn't getting enough protein in my system, I'd be really sick. Anyway, I better go and I will talk to you all soon. I guess I just wanted to rant. And I had someone, you know, something happened the other day that just completely like went, whoa, I already wonder who I am. Because I feel like a fraud because I have changed all these process, thought processes. So to a degree, I feel like, am I real? I'm, am I a real human being or am I fake? And, and I look in the mirror and I don't, I don't see who I was. There's nothing that I see anymore other than my nose. There is nothing that I see that, that I used to see in the mirror. I don't look in the mirror and go, ugh. Now I look in the mirror and go, all right, whack a bit of makeup on. Okay, you look crappy without makeup, Cass. But whack a bit of makeup on and, and yeah. You look like a not bad 38-year-old woman. So a healthy 38-year-old woman. Something I have never, I've never been healthy in my life until recently. So I've extended my life by, what, 20 years, 30 years? I'm not a walking heart attack anymore. Um, there are some bad habits I still need to drop, but I'll get there. But I like climbing things. If a tree's there, I'll climb it. <laughs> you know, I was standing on my fridge the other day. I climbed up on the chair. I went, oh, I'd like to see what the view is like from up there. <laughs> I like climbing things. <laughs> it doesn't make me a loon. It makes me a human being who's curious. So, anyway, I'll talk to you all soon. And, um, yeah, I don't know if this helps anyone with my rant. Probably helps me more than anything to rant and talk. Um, but, yeah. I think my point was before that I was called fake and I was in fairyland and that and I had to, you know, and am having to go through certain things to realise, no, I wasn't crazy. Um, I'm not crazy. Probably crazy wanting to climb Everest in most people's eyes. Um, but, yeah, I guess a psychologist will help me through some stuff. All right, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Yeah! <laughs> Bye, guys.